Well, folks, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm sure over the next minute or two, people will continue to join us. Uh, but good afternoon, and thank you so much for taking the time out of, uh, out of your busy days. I know everyone has a lot going on. Uh, a little bit um, about what we're going to do over the next uh, 45 minutes to an hour or so, and that is uh, go through some of the highlights of the law enforcement responder text and uh, some of its proposed or some of its theoretical applications and how folks are already using it around the country. Thank you. So my name is Matt Levy, and a little bit about myself, I am an emergency physician at the uh, Johns Hopkins Center for Law Enforcement Medicine uh, here in Baltimore, and I am also a senior medical officer with our Center for Law Enforcement Medicine. Uh, we spend a lot of time working with local, state, and federal law enforcement agencies, uh, both in, in the way of providing uh, real-time medical direction, uh, as well as educational curriculum planning, course development, and training exercises. Uh, I've, uh, this is now my 19th year in emergency services. I started off as an EMT, then a paramedic, uh, was a tactical medic along the way, and uh, spent a great deal of my time still working with, um, with a variety of different agencies, both at the local, state, and federal level. So, first of all, now is probably a good time to make sure you all can hear me okay. Um, Alicia, am I coming across okay? Uh, yes, I can hear you fine. I know that you know we'll have a little bit of background noise as people do join the call over the next couple of minutes, but I'll be trying to manage that. Um, just to, to keep the noise down, and because we do have a large uh, group participating, I'd just like to uh, invite anybody uh, that might have questions during Matt's presentation to submit them uh, to me, Alicia Weissman, via the chat. We have a section reserved at the end of the presentation for a question and answer period, and we'll read through the questions that we've received and invite you to ask them, some to Matt, just in the interest of keeping everybody uh, on schedule. Uh, we'll let Matt go through the presentation and then take some questions at the end. At the end. Oh, that'll be fantastic, that'll be and thank you. And, and again, we have um, a very large number of folks participating in the call today. Uh, last count, it was uh, well well over 150. So, so there's bound to be pagers and blackberries and radio squelching, and, and it's the world we all live and work in. Uh, but if we can just do our best to try to keep the exogenous noise down or the uh, background noise down, it would probably be great. So. Uh, on behalf, first of all, on behalf of the authors of the book, uh, Dwight Polk and Nelson Tang and Randy Stair and Josh Shapiro, I'd like to thank you guys for joining us today. The the book is uh, is really the brainchild of of a lot of folks who have dedicated their careers to the education and training of law enforcement personnel and and this unique element of law enforcement response work that deals with with the medical response aspect of things. Now, most folks don't go into law enforcement because of their overwhelming love of patient care or dealing with bleeding things and stuff like that, but, but we accept and acknowledge that it's a reality of the job. It's part of what we have to do in law enforcement, part of what, uh, as educators and, and, and trainers, we have to prepare personnel to be able to handle. So what makes this book unique and what makes this project so unique is this is one of the first efforts to really speak to the law enforcement responder audience primarily. As many of you know, uh, for, for a long time, the concept uh, was always, well, let's take uh, meta, an off-the-shelf first responder type course or an emergency responder type course and textbook and apply it and use that to train our law enforcement personnel what they need to know out of it. And what ends up happening is, is we kind of get this square peg in a round hole phenomena where some of the material extrapolates and, and transfers over well but some of it just doesn't fit very well. So, so this book was really, really designed to speak to the audience that is law enforcement by law enforcement medical directors, law enforcement medics, operators, uh, and personnel from, again, all aspects of local, state, federal, private, corporate law enforcement, as well as, um, as, well as folks who have spent their careers working in and around this field. That said, the book really has a double set of objectives throughout it. And, and as, you, uh, as you go through the book, you'll realize that it's really meant to provide the necessary information uh, for folks to do their job uh, medically, but within the concept of operations of what, what it is that law enforcement has to do, because there are oftentimes other compelling and competing responsibilities. So the book was created to be a, to be a, reference, a reference tool to be a tool that could uh, be used to adjunct or support a course, uh, and for material to be developed from, as uh, source material. 
Input came, like I said, from uh, from national and international experts, and, uh, and really the authors deserve a great deal of, of commendation for this effort because it represents a turning point in an evolution in how we train law enforcement medical responders. But let's talk a little bit more about this concept of operations and why it's so important. The goal, as I said, was really to give that instructor, that law enforcement instructor, the material that was relevant and appropriate uh, for, for, the, for the audience they're teaching. That is either recruits in a class, maybe folks doing an in-service, perhaps folks coming together at a conference. But the idea being that from a, the, the approach is from a very different angle for law enforcement as it is for regular medical personnel. So we really wanted to uh, really capitalize on this concept, this buzzword of all hazards approach, making sure that every situation we talk about in the book uh, whether it be a medical emergency, a traumatic injury, uh, or overall mission planning, that it really is all hazards in nature because that's really the, the world that we live and work in. With that in mind, we never really forgot uh, our roots or who the audience is, and so we constantly, uh, throughout the text, make sure that things are very law enforcement centric. And uh, whether that's uh, keeping it in, in, in perspective uh, of the mission in the short amount of time, that the responder may be taking care of that patient before they hand it off to EMS, all the way through techniques for hemorrhage control, use of personal protective equipment, and the overall law enforcement concept of operations, which, uh, and as many of you in the audience and seeing lots of familiar names in the audience, and it's great to see some of you guys checking on to the call today, as you guys know, as everyone realizes, it's a different set of priorities. So with that in mind, the concept is really to use the best knowledge and the best science we have possible to train our law enforcement responders for what we what they realistically can do in a short amount of time they'll have the patient and what should be clinically done, what's actually useful and appropriate. So as the slide says, really to utilize a variety of military and tactical emergency medical care combined with best practices from fire, rescue, and EMS, as well as other disciplines like search and rescue uh, to support the mission and the, the patient care uh, that would be delivered by law enforcement personnel, albeit whether they're local, state, federal, uh, whether they're private, public sector, uh, whether they're working as a, in a contractor capacity, the concept is still the same, but there's other competing responsibilities that they have. And, and you know, certainly in speaking to this audience and, and, and the collective expertise that's on the call, you guys acknowledge this, and we all know this, that the material to date has really been what we call rescuer neutral. By that we mean it was meant to speak to whoever might be taking care of the patient, whether uh, if we're talking about a first responder text, uh, we'll use an example of the, of, of the tow truck driver, or the, it might be the utility worker, it might be, uh, might be patrol, might, it might be someone uh, responding in a support capacity, or even fire rescue EMS themselves. So a lot of times because of the because we all speak the language that we know or we come from a certain aspect of things and, and many of the EMS and, and first responder textbooks have been written by folks from the fire EMS sector, that's the flavor that a lot of these other texts get written in. That's the, that's the kind of the undercurrent that you see throughout some of these other books. And some of them do a great job and I'm not here to bash other products, it's not about that at all, but rather we saw a unique need to provide a text that could really truly um, speak to law enforcement by law enforcement. And we know that the, the law enforcement experiences don't always relate to the lessons learned. It's a different, it's a different mission configuration, it's a different response element than what uh, fire rescue might have or what some of the elements using some of the other books might have. As a law enforcement medical director, that's the world I live and work in, as a law enforcement medical director and educator, it's always a challenge to find uh, the right support material, the right curricula. You know, we're constantly doing this thing of, of borrowing best practices from all components uh, to, to meet the needs of our, of, of our, of our students and our, and our operators. And so we really, uh, in putting this text together, focus very strongly on making sure um, that, that the material here could be easily extrapolated and taken out uh, to not only being used in local agency-based agency curricula, but also to help support general operational guidelines so that so there is some source material uh, by which how we drive some policy. Well, again, 
in so many words, we can only say the same thing, but really, you know, we, we recognize that there's certain things that we've learned in some cases the hard way, but in other cases, uh, lessons that we keep learning over and over again uh, that need to be incorporated into, into part of a, the effective training and education of, of law enforcement and, and security personnel. You know, it's interesting. We could be having this call in the year 2013 or the year 2001 uh, or any time in between. And, you know, certainly post 9-11, we'd be talking a lot more about the CAMBIO stuff. Now, now the threat du jour has, has gone to the active assailant uh, and IED kind of, a, you know, kind of a scenario. The notion being, folks, that, that regardless of what that threat is, uh, we're talking about potentially volatile environments. We're talking about scenes uh, where there's competing responsibilities. And we can take some of the military and tactical lessons learned in these environments and apply them uh, to an effective curriculum. Is the goal here to make everybody a tactical medic? Absolutely not. That is not the goal, that is not the intention, but rather to take the best practices of what folks need to know and when certain interventions should be performed and applying it to an audience that is primarily law enforcement. So who is that audience? Who are we talking about? We're talking about medical directors. Uh, we're talking about administrative and, and, and senior staff type folks, whether they're chiefs of departments or, or directors or commissioners. We're talking about many of the folks who have joined me on the call today, the boots on the ground educators, the folks who are spending the time trying to figure out how do I take this material and convey it to a group of folks who I may only see once every four to six hours every other year, and how do we do that? Or if I'm running an academy class and we have a limited amount of time to cover the medical stuff, how do we most effectively do it? Police forces and security forces themselves, as I, as I alluded to earlier on, a lot of the material here uh, will serve as effective source material to helping craft policy and operational guidelines. Certainly at the federal level, we have our own unique set of challenges um, where we have a very large decentralized uh, group of individuals across a large geographic area and making sure that we can, uh, we can reach those individuals and actually convey meaningful material in an effective manner is a challenge. Homeland security, personal security, uh, corporate security, international groups and other folks uh, that may be functioning in environments that are quote unquote, uh, you know, still evolving. Now, how is this text best used? Well, I think that if you were to ask me or any of the other authors, uh, you would find some common themes in the answer, but also we have our own kind of individual twist on this. Certainly the text can be a standalone text for law enforcement responder type courses, courses that you're using to train personnel uh, in the concepts that we cover in the book. But it doesn't just stop there. And, and I have to tell you guys, it really, really makes a great companion text uh, for folks going through advanced level training, uh, whether they are paramedics going, uh, who are gonna be working uh, very closely with the law enforcement community, uh, folks who are gonna be doing advanced EMT type work, um, those types of folks who, who need a, a slightly deeper clinical breadth of knowledge, this book is, is written to provide them with the additional information they need about how the law enforcement environment works. In addition to that, we've also uh, received some interesting feedback uh, from folks who have tactical medics and tactical programs who said, you know what, this is a really good thing for our attack medics because uh, these folks may be doing, you know, maybe do a lot of time with the high, serving high-risk warrants and supporting those types of functions, but most tactical medics don't do a lot of stuff when it comes to personal protection uh, or when it comes to, uh, you know, protective assets and, and security details and things like that. So uh, giving them the background and bolstering their knowledge and, and there's certain expectations of, of pieces of information that medical folks are expected to have when they're cross-pollinated into the law enforcement environment. This book does a nice job of helping provide, helping to bolster some of that knowledge. In addition to that, uh, there are some other examples of how the book can be used. Uh, certainly emergency planners uh, have, found, have, have commented that the book you know, gives them some insight as to some of the challenges, kind of like that walk a mile in someone's shoes phenomena. Uh, there are some suggestion uh, that, uh, that, that not just emergency planners, but also uh, the folks who are doing the kind of coordination, interagency coordination folks, uh, not so much the directors of emergency management, but their support individuals uh, liaison officers, folks like that, have also uh, found the text useful. All right, so, so I've talked a lot about who the book is written for, who's written the book, why we wrote the book, and what the book can do. 
but but let's let's kind of call out this Seattle 900 pound gorilla in the room and say, well, how do we actually do that? And, and what I would what I would share with you guys is, is that the text really can be used a couple of different ways. Certainly, someone could go from page one all the way through the very last page of the book and tailor a course that covers all that material. That's that's one option. We would love for you to do that, but that's not necessarily the reality we all live and work in. So a lot of us are faced with, with constraints of time, resources, logistics, and we have to kind of pick and choose what is the most relevant and what is the most clinically important that we can convey to our individuals, to, to, our, to our students. And that's really uh, the other great way that this book can be used. So um, you know, you, every jurisdiction, every department, every group of individuals has a somewhat unique threat. Um, there are some commonalities, of course, uh, but unique types of patient populations and challenges. If you're in a large urban area, then maybe spending time talking about wilderness stuff and some of the altitude issues and some of the other stuff is probably not the best use of your time. If you're in a rural environment, the analog would, of course, be true. So, um, so the book works very nicely to be used in an a la carte manner as well. One of the things that we did make sure as the book was put together, the authors did a great job of really adhering to EMS, you know, core competencies and standard expectations so that um, so the book itself um, could be used as a text um, both in support as a primary course text and a support piece uh, to meet the requirements for licensure certification at the Emergency Medical Responder Scope of Practice. Now, every state has their own kind of twist on that, and we'll talk a little bit more about that probably in the question and answer period. Uh, but certainly, uh, the book does serve that function as well. So what were the objectives? It's, it's probably uh, probably appropriate we take a big step back and talk a little bit about some of the objectives. Uh, first and foremost, you know, we wanted to make sure uh, that we acknowledge the fact that the national EMS educational standards really are, are serve a very important role in EMS certification. There's got to be some co some sheet of music that we can all sing to, and these educational standards really serve that purpose. Throughout the law enforcement responder text, throughout the and I'm going to refer to it, guys, as, as the text, just just to kind of cut down on the wordiness of things. But throughout the text, we really focus on on the issues, the mission, and the challenges that surround those in this environment, in the law enforcement environment, and how the medical aspects of the EMS educational standards apply and translate over to the law enforcement ones. Uh, and again, whether we're talking about folks on protective assignments, we're talking about folks in patrol, we're talking about team, folks providing support to a tactical or SWAT team, uh, you know, lots of mission-specific examples, but really we, we go through the book in a very systematic way trying to address those issues. At the same time, there's only so many ways you could teach somebody to move someone, to carry someone. There's only so many ways you can teach somebody to open an airway. So we try very hard to not stray from the fundamental tenets and concepts of what good medical care needs to be, acknowledging that sometimes, you know, we've heard, many of us have heard this cliche, good care, um, it, it doesn't always equate to good tactics. And how do we balance the two of those out? So there's lots of variability in the text. And, and whether, you know, that, that's an advantage, and it also gives you guys some flexibility as end users of the product because we wanted it that way. We didn't want to lock you into the only way to do something. If there's three or four ways to accomplish a, a similar a goal, we try to cover those in the text so that uh, you can then adopt or talk about what is best used in your local jurisdiction or whoever your group that you're teaching is. We really tried very hard to give the educators, course directors, medical directors, the flexibility to apply additional content as needed to take out um, both, let's say you're doing a seminar on a particular topic, uh, to pull out that section from the book to use that uh, in, as a standalone. And it does, it does a nice job of doing that as well. So as we look at the course syllabi itself, really what we're talking about is, is that, you know, some have taken an EMR, an emergency medical responder curriculum, uh, to provide, you know, you know, you know, some have adapted this curriculum to really apply rescuer and awareness courses that aren't as detailed. And, you know, again, this is that square peg round hole I had mentioned earlier to the, to the actual law enforcement responder scope of practice. These courses, you know, oftentimes um, can cut back on time or save time by trying to do two or three things at once. Uh, what we try to do and what we try to do with a focal group 
um, with, with this text being directed at the law enforcement community is not speak to every possible scenario, not speaking to the tow truck driver who may be taking a first responder course or the firefighter who has to consider structural firefighting hazards and all these kinds of issues, but really focus and utilize you know, the real law enforcement um, centric issues and taking those assessments of both the physical assessments of the patient, but also how do we assess the mastery of knowledge and incorporating that as well. So it goes in, and that spans everything, guys, from, from tourniquet drills at the range uh, to dealing with a traffic stop and a person turns out to being a diabetic, uh, all the way through the, uh, you know, the, the buzzword of active shooter and, and how we handle types of care and, and environments that are still evolving. You know, we look at EMS uh, refresher courses. Uh, one of the things that we really try uh, to do with the textbook in terms of uh, how it can be used is, is to talk about handing off of patients. Uh, you know, as, as, as many of us know, one of the goals is to get the patient passed into the established healthcare system as quickly as possible. Really discuss how we deal with that handoff, what information is relevant to be shared, what information needs to be, uh, needs to be recognized and transmitted with the patient as they move through healthcare. We're talking about working both law enforcement specific as well as uh, type environments and venues, as well as just the interaction with other law enforcement personnel. Then there's certain, there's an element of, of survival, readiness, and personal preparedness that we really focus on. We talk about clandestine lab issues. We talk about WMD, weapons of mass destruction, some disaster stuff, uh, dealing and understanding with uh, threat, um, both from a, from a ballistic perspective, but also a blast perspective, as well as other types of threats uh, folks may not think about. Certainly covering less lethal, uh, dealing with um, challenges when, when treating an incarcerated patient, because that, that's always always a, a unique challenge and, and stuff like that. And then, then actually uh, the other type of patient that is oftentimes unique and germane to the law enforcement environment, which is the canine patient. You know, a lot of courses, uh, a lot of folks will, jurisdictions, particularly those that, that have heavy canine programs, will send their personnel to canine medical courses, and these are very costly and, and, and oftentimes very lengthy, but the amount of information that's clinically relevant to the responder is a very small portion of that. So we cover that in this book and try to talk about, you know, you know how do you care for a dog that was just shot? How do you handle that? How you know you know what you know things you may not think about. Yes, bleeding is bleeding, um, but uh, but that dog is going to bite. And how do we prepare you for that? How do you you know how do we control that? And how do we work with the handler to take care of it? So all of these kinds of issues are things that we cover that's unique to this book. Now, what about law enforcement EMTs themselves? And and by that, let let me let me take a step back and and say what we're what we're really talking about are either those professionals that have primary law enforcement functions. Uh, at a variety of government levels uh, that have been cross-trained to function in EMS capacity, whether at the EMT level, at some hybrid level of training unique to their need, or the paramedic level. Uh, we, we spend time focusing in the book on some of the needs and law enforcement specific concerns that these folks have to be able to deal with. And you can see the list there for yourselves. But we're talking about everything from weapon systems all the way through uh, how, to, how to affect a, you know, a good mission plan, uh, how to deal with um, you know, certain threats like we talked about earlier, um, and then also things um, that, you may, that you may not think about. You know, if, if you're on a protection detail and you're traveling overseas, there's lots of stuff we take for granted stateside that could be of issue uh, for folks overseas. Now, obviously, if you're using a textbook for a local, uh, local law enforcement agency or a regional or county agency, you're probably going to need to spend as much time dealing with overseas or OCONOS threats. But I'm sure we've all, we all recognize the fact that people have a genuine interest in this, and the book has that material embedded in it, uh, and so you could have obviously skip over those sections, but this may be of interest to the students to read as well. Likewise, those who are preparing to mobilize um, may all, you know, in that environment may also find the material very useful, practical, and, and actually directly applicable to what they're doing. So let's talk for a moment about some of the content that's in the book. Uh, the, the, the book represents uh, literally thousands of hours of effort of, of over 44 contributors. Um, of, and these folks are law enforcement medical directors. They're leaders in the field of law enforcement education. Uh, they are subject matter experts uh, who've published both in scientific literature, but also have spoken extensively at national and international conferences on the topics. And they come from a variety of backgrounds, including law enforcement agencies themselves and training programs, as well as from uh, other related disciplines such as EMS, fire rescue, and, and you know, other related response entities. 
The book, uh, you know, it's interesting. We put on the slide four years uh, from start to finish, but it was actually much longer than that. And, you know, talking with the authors, uh, the lead authors, you know, they'll say that this has been a, um, been a project that probably was closer to six years of, of development. So what I would like to do, because i looking at the number of the sheer number of people who logged in, I'm sure you guys, there may be some folks who have some questions. What I would like to do is open up the call to any questions that anybody has, and then I can be happy to delve in in further detail if there's anything in particular. And I'm also looking and noticing a couple of our authors have been able to join us, and that's great. So welcome, uh, Joff and Dwight and Nelson and Randy, and, and welcome you guys, and thank you guys so much for joining us. So, um, Alicia, I'm going to turn it back over to you, and I'll be happy to take any questions that anybody may have. Thank you. That was a fantastic presentation. Um, I am going to unmute the line in just a minute because we, we do have such a large group that most of the, the call-ins have been muted, and I'm sure there will be a lot of questions. Um, I did receive a couple of questions over the chat while you were presenting, and I want to just bring those to um, the group so that everybody will have the same answers. Uh, the first was, was the, will the PowerPoint presentation be made available? And the answer is yes. Anybody that registered for the webinar will receive a copy of the PowerPoint presentation. And I will be sending that as a follow-up um, in the next day or so. Uh, there was another question about the instructor resources availability, as you predicted there would be. And uh, we have some of our editorial team on the uh, on the phone who could uh, maybe speak to the availability of those resources. So, Alicia, um, this is Christine Hammer, Kenneth Jones, and Martin. Are we there? Is, is the question just about is are they uh, sorry Christine, I think we lost you there for a second. The question was um yes, what are what are the resources available to support this book? So um, the, the instructor's toolkit that accompanies the uh, textbook for this program, there are PowerPoint presentations lecture outlines, and a test bank. So if we have folks who are interested in, in reviewing those instructor materials, um, get in touch with, um, with me, with Alicia. We can put you in touch with your Jones and Bartlett sales rep and make sure you get copies of those to take a look at. Uh, another question has come in is, has a time frame been developed to reference the time for the chapters? Uh, I'm sorry, there's a little bit of feedback on my end. Can you repeat the second part of the question? Has a time frame been developed for what? To align to each of the chapters. Oh, a course time frame? Um, it, it, I, if that's what they're asking in terms of is there an actual timeline for the course? You know, it's an interesting question. Uh, there actually isn't. We could certainly provide some recommendations, but but really, it's going to depend a lot on the on the intrinsic knowledge of the group that you're training, and and how much time should be spent uh, on each individual section. Um, but uh, but it's a really good question in terms of you know 15 minutes on that, 30 minutes on that. The challenge is is you know when we're we're trying to convey to such a large audience of such a diverse background, even within the law enforcement community, uh, that certain things may take longer than anticipated. And the danger in a timeline is that you can then derail that entire timeline if you deviate too much from it. It's a big, great question. Uh, another question that's come in is, will a certification program be offered, and will this be available as a CME <coughs> offering? Uh, great question. Um, we've gotten that question a lot. There's a couple of ways to look at this. So CME itself is something that is um, is is actually awarded 
through a certain accrediting body. In EMS, that would be cis beams. Uh, for medical folks, it might be the, their respective board for medicine. Uh, so it would be up to the individual sponsoring jurisdiction to apply for those CEUs. Uh, am I aware of folks who have taken different pieces of this course and used and gotten CME for it? Yes, that has been done. Uh, but uh, but in the curriculum, really, you know, the outline and the objectives really, really go nicely for, to help facilitate that. Uh, but, you know, as far as the actual um, standalone certification course goes, uh, the, really this book is meant to empower the local and state and regional groups that are using it um, to, to apply it. Now, I know folks, there's a, there, are, there are folks out there who are like, listen, we have a need, that need is for a card that says this and, and does that. And, and one of the things that we tried to avoid was, was actually pigeonholing people into a certain curriculum. And it becomes very hard to do that with, if we go down that pathway. So I would answer the question this way. At the current time, we haven't, we haven't, that hasn't been a direction we wanted to go. If there's overwhelming consensus and need, I think that's something we might consider in the future. But great question. Did I lose you guys? No, well, I'm here. Um, oh, okay. Let's see, we've got a lot of questions coming in. Uh, is there an instructor certification and who is authorized to offer this course? Ah, uh, okay, well, so so this is again a kind of a, an evolution of the previous question. And, and the answer is that the course itself does not represent a standalone curriculum. In other words, we're not like an agency that is certifying people in this course. This curriculum, this book was in, in this evolution was meant to be, a, to be a coordinated effort to pull all the material together for you guys to use. Uh, we've received the feedback that folks are very interested in such a course, and, and that is something that you know that could be discussed in the future option. But but right now there is no certifying credential because what we're doing is we're providing the information to the instructor. So if you're an instructor and you're charged with teaching this material to your jurisdiction, uh, and you've already and you already have a medical base of knowledge that, from which you're training from, that would be the ideal person to take the material from this book and apply it to uh, to to your needs. Thank you. Could you um, answer this question? Let's see. Is the curriculum available for post credits, or is that dependent upon each state and their specific criteria? Yeah. So when you, when the, when the when the when the question person the question writer asks uh, post credits, I'm assuming they mean is there a is there a, a hey, guys, number of hours of credit this course is accredited for? And, and, and the answer is exactly what the person said, which is it depends upon the individual state and jurisdiction. You know, we do not represent a certifying body. The authors of this book do not have their own certifying group or agency. There's no conflict of interest with that, guys. So, so when someone does that, there's an intrinsic conflict of interest, it's right, right? I mean, it's take my course, pay us money, we'll give you a book. That, and that wasn't what we set out to do in this process. Um, but um, but certainly it's going to be at the individual state. You, dev you design the course and you go to your current certifying body uh, at whatever level of government that might be, and you say, here are the hours, here's the material, and here's how we do it. Okay, well, I think that we have covered all of the questions that I've received via the chat. Um, the line is open if anybody has any additional questions for Dr. Levy. By the way, I'm available for weddings, bar mitzvahs, and children's birthday parties if anybody's interested. Well, you certainly have been highly entertaining and informative. I'm, I am going to, you can see on the screen that the contact information for Jones and Bartlett Learning is available, our corporate uh, website and phone number. Um, before I close out of the webinar, I am going to email everybody that's online my email address. So if you have any questions uh, or would like any follow-up information, you can contact me directly. Uh, if I can't answer you, I can certainly put you in touch with the right person. And as I said, everybody that registered for the webinar is going to uh, receive a copy of the PowerPoint presentation. That will come from my email address. So again, if you have any questions or would like more information, you can just reply to that email. and. Um, I will try to get you the answers that you're looking for. 
Great. Hey, let's show you. This is Matt. If I could add just one more thing, and that is certainly if a question does come up or, or someone had a very specific content-based question they didn't want to ask in this venue, uh, if folks could email you, if you could forward it to, uh, to myself or the authors, that would be great. Absolutely. All right. Uh, well, I think we can um, keep the uh, keep the line open for another minute or so, just in case please. any questions come in. But I want to thank you, Dr. Levy, again for a, a fantastic presentation. Thank everybody that participated, and um, you know, if you have uh, any questions, please feel free to reach out. All right. Well, thank you all, everyone. Please reach out, stay safe, and uh, continue to do great work out there. Thank you. Thanks very much. And this is Matt. I'm going to stay on. The leader has interview. disconnected. The conference will be terminated in two minutes. Is there anyone else who has any quick any quick questions for me before I uh, disconnect on my end here? All right. Well, thank you all very much, and uh, have a great, great day. Take care now. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.